The GAA Football Review on Off The Ball. With AIB, proud sponsors of the GAA Senior Football Championship. Check out hashtag the toughest for more. Welcome back. Joe Malloy with you this evening. So Billy Joe Patton is on the line. Hey, Billy Joe. Good evening, Joe. Kerry 319, Mayo 13 points, the scoreline yesterday. So Mayo will take on Galway next day out in three weeks' time, April 24th, and Kerry will be in action against Cork, presumably when this uh, GA Cork situation is sorted out at Porky Rin on May the 7th. So we were just making the point on the news round, in any given game against Division 1 opposition, if you score 319, that's very impressive. If you hold the opposition to 13 points, that's very impressive. When you do both, it's a complete washout. And it just looked like a real signature statement performance here by, I suppose, the team many of us feel now are the All-Ireland winners in waiting. Yes, uh, utter domination, really, from Kerry. And when you think about it, the, the league campaign has been dominated by them, but they've been by far the most impressive uh, team throughout. They've been a team that you could rely on to be consistent, to perform more often than not. Um, they look to be you know, really well organised, really focused, aggressive and physical. And then at the same time, you know, they have the best footballer in the country at present in, in David Clifford. They've been able to deal with an injury to a player as important as, as o Sean O'Shea. Um, so it has been really, really impressive. And we spoke a lot, maybe at the earlier stages of the league, about what can they do differently maybe to other years. And they are much more organised defensively. Uh, I think they're much more physical. I think even yesterday you saw evidence that maybe in an area where they maybe were not as strong as Dublin or even Mayo in the past in terms of that middle third running ability. They they showed plenty of that yesterday against Mayo and totally dominated that sort of running area of the field. And that's something that you know, all goes really well for them uh, for later in the year. In Jack O'Connor, they have a serial winner. They have a man of real substance. And Kieran Cunningham was in yesterday on the Sunday paper review and he was reminding me in Jack O'Connor's autobiography, he talked in his initial period with Kerry about scouring... Ulster uh, coaching manuals and trying to really get to the heart of what they were doing from a defensive point of view and now here we are and history repeats itself Paddy Talley down you come and whoom they have seemed to have just sorted out their defence uh, to a large extent very very quickly or certainly to the extent that what happened to them against Tyrone last year would be less likely to happen in the same manner again I think so I think that they will be much more um, ready for a situation where they play against a team like Tyrone did who will be patient who will get lots of bodies behind the ball will try and frustrate them of course that was nothing like what we saw in the game yesterday it was mm. the complete opposite of that so I, I think that they they will be ready for that their attackers their midfielders will be able to move the ball from left to right. I think you're even seeing it in terms of the way David Clifford is playing, that he's playing with patience. He knows he's going to get enough touches to be impactful on the game. He's not coming out the field looking for for the for the ball unnecessarily. They're, they're working the ball towards him. So in those situations where they're playing against a blanket defence, I, I think they'll be much better. I, I don't think you will see the panic sort of generated turnovers that maybe you saw last year. I think then from when you look at their, their own setup, I think think that they've they'll have learned in terms of being organized defending the the d really well not giving away soft freeze and that's something that they've taken maybe from some of the successful northern teams because in general they're using players that we've seen before play for Kerry you know Foley O'Sullivan Tyke Morley Brino Beglia but they're just playing at a much improved level and I put that down to you know Jack O'Connor's influence Paddy Talley's influence and just the general understanding and organisation they have uh, at the back but, but one thing I want to say about Jack, Jack O'Connor and just occurred to me you know watching the game yesterday he's always been very good at isolating weaknesses in opposing teams particularly in an attacking sense I think he's an aggressive manager I think he's a manager that is not just he doesn't want to set up his team to be defensive and be hard to beat you know he knows that they have to be solid if they're going to win games. But at the same time, he wants to be proactive. He wants to make things happen on the field. And I, I suppose I was on the receiving end of it as a Mayo player all those years ago when they played long ball direct into to the Mayo full back line in 04 and 06 and dominated the game that way. I think yesterday you saw Jack O'Connor you know, notice a weakness in the Mayo team with their midfielders attacking high up the field and they really attacked that area in behind the Mayo midfield, ran right down the centre half back channel at every opportunity, whether it was Paddy Clifford or uh, Gavin White. And I think that that's something that he also does well and he needs credit for. Yeah, OK. 
on the boy wonder then who's 23 now so I don't think we can call him that anymore <laughs> he's been a national figure for about five six years I remember the first time I saw him in person was that Crow Park minor final where he scored any number of goals and it was phenomenal and people around said well let's see him do it at senior level and uh, here we are 1-6 uh, scored uh, poor Gohara was in an invidious enough position I think for the afternoon not much he could do but what we're seeing here from Clifford week on week on week is extraordinary and we're talking about generational player and, and like he's going to move into a sphere where he's been talked about as one of the all time greats over the next couple of years as Kerry you would presume are likely to win all Ireland's and you know I, you, you kind of wonder how he's dealing with the hype like idiots like me on the radio making statements like that and yet he is like he really is and everywhere he goes he's a superstar and he's delivering Yes, I, and I don't know him personally. I've never met him, and I haven't, uh, you know, I haven't spoke to many people that do know him. But I suppose just looking at it from from where I'm sitting, you see the talent. The talent was evident, as you said, at minor, at, at underage grades the ability to kick off both feet I think we spoke a couple of weeks ago Joe about for such a big man he gets the ball to his feet so quickly so he's so hard to block down I think you, you've you seen him the last couple of seasons he's always had a big frame but now he's added that strength he's extremely difficult to, to push off the ball carrying the ball when he's running with the ball he's, his his control is excellent his, his you know ability to solo with both feet and able to use the opposite hand to keep defenders away from him their, their skills that you know he has but I, I think if something that you know how do you how do you maintain that that uh, determination to continue to improve and 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 that's obviously what he has his mindset is he's looking to get better and better all the time and I think that this season it's been really noticeable that he's been patient and he hasn't been over eager to get on the ball and take men on at at uh, at every opportunity he's tried I think to ensure that he stays close to goal he has this crazy ability that even if he's 45 yards out out of the wing he can kick it over the bar but I think you're seeing that patience where he's working left to right he's not trying to find himself in corners where he can get bottled up by two or three defenders he wants to be winning the ball in the D in those real danger areas I think the goal he got against Armagh a couple of weeks was a prime example of that where he is actually collecting the ball just outside the penalty spot I think the first point he got against yesterday where O'Hor is in a brilliant position but but Clifford has won the ball on the 21 and he kicks it over the block and over the bar nothing a defender can do in that situation so I think what has allowed him to continue to get better has not been so much down to all the physical improvements in terms of getting strength or any technical improvement. It's about his understanding of the position and his understanding as to how he can get better playing the position. And I think it's one strength that Kerry has in terms of the people that are involved in coaching teams down there that they seem to be able to maximise that attack and ability. And, you know, if you look at somebody like even Kieran Donaghy, who came, started to play full forward, you know, as a raw enough sort of a player. But by the end of that that period, and this is credit to him and to credit all his coaches, he was so clever in terms of his game intelligence he knew how to play the game perfectly how to play that position perfectly and you're seeing that from David Clifford now he is a real understanding of to, how to play the position in the most efficient way that he wins the ball closest to goal mm. where he can be almost unstoppable and even several years into his career now I'm still struck by the technique because it is unique and you think of say Morris Fitzgerald for instance through to a Kieran McDonald maybe even uh, you'd think of Gooch to an extent when he went into that playmaking role there was like a smoothness and a silkiness to their technique and you could see how maybe they'd watched each other or been influenced by certain players Clifford's in his own sphere here and I wouldn't say aesthetically it's as beautiful as McDonald or Fitzgerald but bloody hell it's effective and it's totally homemade and home baked <laughs> Yeah, I would agree. I think when you the players you mentioned, it's it's about that maybe a languid style, smoothness of strike, the ability to you know play the ball outside of the boot, and and, and something that kind of looks easy to them. Whereas Clifford, it's different. There's I'm not saying there's a clunkiness to certain things he does, but there's definitely an aggression and a power to it. Like the he, he, his shots from distance snap. He the, he's made contact with the ball in, almost instantly. It happens so quickly. The ball is up and away and over the bar before you even realise it. There's no wind up I think I mentioned a couple of weeks ago there's very little backlift for, to some of these shots and I think every game you play you see something different in his technique that just you know you just say oh I didn't know I didn't know he had that uh, or, or there he's given me another example of that skill that so few players have and I think even the goal yesterday you know to, to beat O'Hora 
using his left foot solo to get in behind him, get beyond the shoulder, cut across to, to take O'Hora out of the game, and then to have the skill level to kind of play a soft right-footed finish high into the net because in every situation like that most normal human players will just try and hit that as hard as you can on your weaker foot and keep to keep the ball down to go for a goal but he knows exactly where the goalkeeper is he knows exactly the finish that's going to find the back of the net and he doesn't try and hit it too hard it keeps it high and it finds its way to the roof of the net that, that to me is just composure and clarity of thought but then the ability to execute and running at full pace on his weaker foot remarkable yeah that right footed finish perfect example of this technique again as not usual that kind of stuff and look O'Hora tried everything including sledging including after that goal giving him a pat as if to say well done even I have to confess that was rather good so O'Hora did his best and he was in that position what about Mayo's approach we'll get onto their general approach in a moment but say just their approach to O'Hora versus Clifford yesterday I don't really have a problem with O'Hora being assigned the task of Martin Clifford. I think O'Hora is he's, 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 a, he's a traditional defender in that he's not maybe trying to win every ball out in front and race up the field away from, from his marker. I think he's very good with his hands. I think he even saw evidence of it yesterday where he made two, I think, excellent dispossessions in the sec- start of the second half where the ball was coming into Clifford or Clifford had the ball and he's able to knock it away and pick it up and, and, and win possession back. I think that uh, you know he generally plays his his uh, markers from behind and tries not to let them inside, and he did that effect you know to to some effect against Clifford yesterday. The problem with Clifford is the ball he was winning some balls in situations where he's thirty five yards out, and he's getting his shot away so quickly and it's going over the bar. There's you know there's two or three of the one six or whatever that Clifford scored that Hora couldn't do any more with. Uh, he's in a good position, and that's when you have to question the overall approach to 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 dealing with a player like David Clifford or dealing with David Clifford is that he needs help. Yeah. You need that if, if, if O'Hora can delay him, which he did at times, he was able to delay him at times, well, then you need the second man in, the, in to help the dispossession or even force him out the field. But if, if you're isolated for any period of time, the best you can hope for is to delay him for uh, for a couple of seconds. And, and, and in fairness to O'Hora, he did that. And I look at O'Hora's performance yesterday and I don't really knock him for it, to be no. honest, because I don't think there's any defender that could have done any better in those circumstances. What, what, what do you think Horn's thinking uh, therefore is? Because, I mean, look, James Horn's thought he spent the, the weeks thinking about this and I, I suspect he's aware of this Clifford kid, you know? So is, is his <laughs> rationale, well, poor, go out, try and keep him to six, seven scores. I'll consider that you break an even and then that's not going to deter, deter from the rest of my approach here. Because Mayo, Mayo have a way of playing and they like to stick to it. That's it. And the Mayo way of playing is not to generally play with extra defenders. It's to play high energy, high tempo game with the middle eight players being dominant over your opposition and being able to run and press the opposition team in their own half, you know, put pressure on the opposition kick to kick out to keep them pinned in their own in their own half, and to really dominate that area of the field. And to, I suppose, a defensive tactic for them would be to try and ensure that good ball doesn't go into their full back line because the pressure they're able to uh, put on players out the field. But that wasn't evident yesterday, and that's kind of understandable. When you lose Jermaine O'Connor, Paddy Durkin, Oshin Mullen, players like that not able to to play due to due to injury. But I think there's something, and I know there are plenty of Mayo supporters that would feel that, okay, you find yourself in that situation. You find yourself with all those players absent. Well, then you have to kind of change tack because you've no hope otherwise. And I think yesterday is evidence of that. Mm. Yeah, it was it was just an odd performance and there was a flatness about it. I mean, with any other team, you'd ask how psychologically damaging is it to the group ahead of a game in three weeks' time. With Mayo, you kind of think, well, like, you know, their specialty is coming back from psychologically damaging. But, but it's concerning. I mean, you, you, is there... Their style of play will beat, at the level they can produce it, will beat the vast majority of teams in the country. But against Kerry, like... If Horan, even with the likes of Ushin Mullen, Paddy Dirk and Dermot O'Connor back, he may have to start thinking about adjusting how open Mayo are, how on the front foot Mayo are against these better teams, no? Yes, I think so. I, I would agree with that. I think that Mayo are going to have to give consideration to playing an extra defender, maybe playing seven defenders, um, playing somebody that can get back there and help out the full back line, or at least having the option to do that. When you look at some of the defenders that if Mayo had, a, 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 you know, a a decent bill of health in terms of if Oshin Mullen was fit, if if your Oma Glocklin was fit, they're players that can transition very quickly from defence to attack. But at 
similarly they can get back and help out in, in a defensive setting as well add that to, to Paddy Durkin you know Stephen Cohen much more comfortable playing in the half back line as opposed to having to do man marking jobs um, then you would be in a position that you have that flexibility to allow your defenders to attack but at the same time have more security in that you could get seven, eight, ten bodies back at the same time because even if you look at yesterday some of the, be- the best work that Maddie Ruon and-, and Jordan Flynn do is in attacking sense so you really are leaving gaping holes behind you and it's definitely something that Mayo have to look at they have to be be much more defensively s- solid than that particularly when if you had a fit, fully fit Killian O'Connor, if you had a fully fit Tommy Conroy and Ryan O'Donoghue who had maybe shown the form he'd shown er- earlier in the league or all throughout the league up until yesterday, well then then you could say with some confidence that Mayo will be a, you know will get a good score themselves. But without Killian you know, O'Connor starting, without uh, with Tommy Conroy being out for the year, it's going to be very difficult for Mayo to get big scores. So they're have to, going to have to change their tactic a little bit and be more defensively sound. And I think the solution to that is by playing a, an extra defender or two. Mm. Has Horan ever done that? Not really, not really that often. Maybe a couple of times played an extra uh, defender. I can't think off the top of my head, yeah. but probably used them in an attacking sense. In that you you play somebody like Owen McLaughlin or Oshin Mullen, who are very attack minded in the way they want to play the game defensively. They want to get out in front of their man and they want to drive them into into their own territory. Uh, and maybe in that in that situation, I don't think he's ever played where you've act, identified somebody say well I want you to sit 15 yards in front of the opposition full forward that's your job for the day OK well that's the league done serious business gets underway very shortly Billy Joe Patton thanks Mel Billy Joe cheers no problem Joe the GAA football review no on off the ball with AIB proud sponsors of the GAA senior football championship check out hashtag the toughest for more